So the, the, basically, the um, the tag, uh, as I said, couples using in, in this thing called induction. I'm not going to go into the physics of it because it's not really important for you to understand. But it's useful to know that in this kind of shape, it couples best if it's parallel like that to the reader. Like that doesn't work very well. I'm sure if you use oyster cards, you know you've got to kind of do, do it that way. Doing that doesn't doesn't really work. It's to do with um, that the coil that's flat there couples best if the other coil is flat against it. So that's something to bear in mind. Now there's different frequency bands of RFID. Um, which is, it's worth bearing in mind if you want to come up with a, a more sophisticated application. So um, you've got basically low, middle and high frequency bands. And uh, most things are, um, uh, most uh, RFID tags are kind of low frequency, so very short to medium range, they're very inexpensive. Um, mostly used for access control, so these sort of swipe cards, that kind of thing. Car immobilizers. A lot of cars now have an RFID tag built into the key fob, and there's a reader built into the steering column, and the car will only start if the, uh, the reader is nearby. Or so if the tag's nearby. Um, as you go through, you get to the high frequency devices, which are uh, a lot more sophisticated. They've got a much longer reading range, um, but they're more expensive. Uh, and they're used for things like toll collection systems on, on motorways, which I'll come to. Are they all passive? Thanks. No. Now these higher ones um, tend to be active ones. So if you want to get any kind of read distance longer than a few centimetres, you pretty much have to go for active tags. Um, I mean, the bigger your reader, the longer your detection distance. That's why shops, uh, the RFID readers in, in shops are these big kind of loops about that high and that wide, so that they can detect as you go in between them. But any kind of longer distance, and you end up having to go for active tags. Just because, uh, mainly because of this sort of energy thing of, uh, if you've got a passive tag, it has to <laughs> gather enough energy to be able to send. So active tags, these are examples of them, and they can be quite small. So um, it's not <coughs> of a plastic case with an aerial, and it's got batteries built into it, usually non-replaceable, because uh, they, they last quite a long time. Um, and the active tags, you can do uh, sort of more interesting things with them. Um, this is uh, a system where it's, it's kind of looking into integrating um, the tags, these aeroscout tags, with an existing wireless internet system, uh, network. So you can start integrating sort of tracking tags around. Um. Now, positioning on more sophisticated systems, you can start to, I mean, with this system, all it can tell you is if there's a tag there or not and what the um, ID of that tag is, if, if it sees one. More sophisticated systems can do things like um, say where the tag is in space, um, so you get sort of localization information. This, um, this uh, company is developing tags for, for shopping trolleys, for instance, so um, products have RFID tags on them, you put them in your trolley and it comes up with information about where the foods come from, what are its air miles, what have you travel miles, um, what's its carbon footprint, uh, and so on. And the big aim of these kinds of things is that you fill your trolley up with your goods, all of which have RFID tags, and you walk out through the supermarket um, exit, and it can read all the tags at the same time and give you your bill straight away. They haven't managed it yet just because it's such a hard thing to, to do. But that's what they're aiming for. So some of these positioning systems, this is quite a sophisticated one, it can read from quite a large distance, so it can start to say where tags are within a certain area, and they're kind of marketing this as RFID radar. Um, and this is working more by sort of triangulation, so you've got um, 
two readers separated by a certain distance and measuring the signals coming back from the various RFID tags and range. They can work out where they are. But this is quite an <coughs> experiment, well, not experimental, but quite sophisticated system. So main uses of RFID at the moment, lots on transportation and distribution, so you have a packing crate, you attach an RFID tag to it, and then every time it goes through a distribution center, you scan it, you can look up um, where it's come from, where it's going, how long it's taken, etc. Uh, manufacturing industry uses it a lot, again, for identifying uh, an object, say, coming down um, a, 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 a manufacturing process on a um, conveyor belt or whatever. Use a lot in security, access control to buildings, that kind of thing, and as I said, animal tagging, um, keeping track. Um, more items, a lot used a lot in clothing, retail outlets, stop people stealing uh, clothes, objects. Uh, you've seen when you buy an item of clothing at the checkout, they have a machine that takes off this plastic tag from it. That's got an RFID tag inside it. Protection of equipment, um, access control to vehicles, um, so you get car immobilizers. You've got these car sharing schemes where you just wave an RFID tag at the car as you approach, and it lets you in, that kind of thing. Um, for the uh, active tags, you've got toll collection for roads and bridges. Used a lot on the continent in Italy, you know, Spain, places like that. So you've got now an active RFID uh, tag in your car, and as you drive up to the barriers, it reads the information, charges your account, and the barrier goes up, and you don't really have to slow down. Um, 